Let us now go back in time to 22nd May 2017 before we ordered a single part from VP. I took inventory of all the new old stock that we had required in the purchase of both Amazona. Not was supposed to say Amazon, but I rather like where it went. Whew. Got like four pages of uh, notes, new and used parts, two columns per page. We got a bunch of stuff in all these boxes here. Really exciting stuff. So um, our next job is to price everything out and see how much we're going to order versus how much we already have. There's like a whole set of pistons and uh, engine repair kits, like all this IPD stuff. You've probably seen it in previous videos. So it's really helpful that this guy had so many spare parts. Thanks, Bruce. Really working out for us, so I'm happy to see that. And then it was summer, and it was a very busy next five months until I got back to work on the cars. This is Telluride, Colorado. I took Arthur all the way to California and back, and uh, this was even the time that I explored the island of, uh, I don't remember if it was Catalina or Isla Nublar. I'm always mixing those two up. Uh, it was a really nice trip. We ordered the pallet from VP Auto Parts, checked all that in in season two of the Volvo Rescue, and then it was October, and it was time to get back to work. This is my little Volvo farm, three B20s and a B18 on the left. This one's a B20 F head, it's got double valve springs. This is a B18 head, it's got double valve springs. Over here we got a B20B, single valve springs. B20F, single. This is a B20A, single. And you know, just to check a B18A or D, because they kind of have the same deck height, it's uh, single as well. Pulling apart the B20B so we can get it sent over to the engine shop. There's my stack of valve covers. Well, here's our first sign that our engine has been rebuilt. The freeze plug has the 42 millimeter designation on as long as well as that aftermarket little emblem. And it's got a rear main seal that's a neoprene upgraded version, just like Genevieve did. There's both bell housings for both engines. And we gotta take the head off and then we can see what we're dealing with here. Oh boy, it's really exciting. Although, I would feel terrible having to rebuild an engine that doesn't really need it. So it might even be better for me to just rebuild this engine and sell this one if it's rebuilt. We've got all the head bolts loose and it's time to pull this head off. I'm so excited because it looks so good and everything came apart so nicely. Oh, that's not quite how I expected it to go, but it's going. All right, I had to pull this off. And now, lift up. Some of these guys are still. Okay. Lift. Oh, set down gently. All right. Well, looks about as good as you can expect. It's not as sooty as the engine in Genevieve. So, I don't know if it's, you know, quite right or if it's a little lean, especially with this one being so bright, but yeah, it looks good. Let's see about these pistons. I'm going to raise a blade, see if we can determine if they've been oversized or not. I've really missed making videos because it's so entertaining to talk to myself on camera, of course. So I'm sort of talking to you in the future, if you think about it. If you look at the cylinder walls, you'll notice you can still see the cross hatching all the way down, which is a really good sign of a healthy engine. They look nice and clean. They're not too varnished or anything like that. And there's no ridge at the top of the cylinder here. Nothing that you can feel, which indicates that there's not excessive wear on the cylinder walls. So I think I'm going to leave this engine be for the time being. If anything, it's a rebuilt bottom end. I don't need to worry about it. Any. I've driven it and it drives great. Now, if I'm gonna put all the money into rebuilding a B20, I'd rather pick one that needs it versus one that could, but doesn't, you know? Like when I rebuilt Arthur, I had a hole in two pistons. This is cylinder number two, where the wall was damaged. Yeah, my piston rings started wobbling and then they knocked out the uh, the side of the piston. So I had to be bored 40 over for that very reason. You know why you should change your oil frequently? because it makes your mechanic mad when you don't, because he's got to go through all these gloves, and they ain't cheap. They are. Um, also, it just makes for a huge mess. This was probably the gunkiest, ugliest B20 I've seen, and uh, I've only seen about four. So, 
There's the gross stuff and all the oil passages and all this build up inside of the crankcase. And it's a good thing I'm rebuilding this one versus the other one. Look at that. If you don't change your coolant or your water pump, it gets jelly. So pretty inefficient way of cooling your engine, actually. It's always bothered me that those holes get partially covered by these head gaskets. So I'm not sure what what's going on there, if it's intentional or not. I don't think so, but I can't be sure. Yeah, this is definitely an ugly, ugly engine. Blech. So we're going to, um, you know, it's it's all it's all original, but we're going to rebuild this one instead and keep that freshly rebuilt, freshly rebuilt one for a lot longer. And then of course I've got to rebuild those M41s. But in the meantime, I'm just gonna pack up, pack up and pack up more stuff. So lots of boxes and things and um, yeah, it's a really exciting time. I need to hurry up and get this in the car and then drive it off and drop it off to the same place I put Genevieve's engine, the re rebuilding shop. Ew, would you look how ugly that is? Ugh, that's gross. Yeah. That's Jocelyn, she's my niece and my helper today. <laughs> I'm telling you, Volvo is a family thing. Jocelyn, did you, do, did you know that I make YouTube videos? No. I make YouTube videos for the cars. And so people all over the world will watch them and they'll, they'll learn how to fix things or learn how to just have fun. <laughs> Don't tell your mom I'm not making you wear safety glasses. <laughs> Isn't that fun? I hope one day she'll look back at this photo and it will mean something nice to her. supposed to lift with your legs. I tried. Genevieve's engine went to the machine shop first, and then it was Bruce. Keep in mind, both cars are still in primer at this point. If you're ever in Albuquerque, the place is Empire Engines. Yeah. Is it Taylor Swift? Yeah. <laughs> is this? It sounds just like a, but probably not. This is a... Kelsey Ballerini. Oh, cool. There's something that happens once you reassemble it. Uh, well, the edge or is that a factory? Thing? No, that just that honestly, that edge like that is just because I when I pressed it. Oh, it I kinda, see. It's it kind of okay. pushed it out a little bit. But I mean, the inside they, they look okay, and I'm sure they would have probably worked okay. But on the other I engine, we well reused them. We didn't have these as an option. Yeah, yeah. I mean, is you can change them or you don't have to, but you might as well change them if you're redoing the motor. I would say for sure change them. Although, if you're putting new pistons, you want new ones exactly every time exactly. you're pulling them out exactly i'm sure if I we were to, if we were to reuse if we were to reuse these it probably would have fit on these pins okay it may have been a little loose so yeah it's better to but just even with the flare or you, you try to not not flare oh way. well i mean i wouldn't have even mess with them if we were going to use them i wouldn't have done anything to them i would have just left them in there. I mean, you know, they're not in there anymore cool so that would be like brand new basically now what do you do for these guys to check them uh, well, I'm gonna. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna recondition this end here. Yeah. So I'll uh, I'll cut. I'll take the cap off. Mm -hmm. Cut the top, the cap, where the machine gun on the inside. Um, put it back on. Work it together. That'll make obviously make the hole a little smaller. Um, and then I'll get on that thing right there and just stand here until it's. And then I'll just measure. This is where I'll oh, check that's it. That's clever. Right here. Yeah. So you Basically shrink it down. Make them, yeah, yeah. And then. Yeah. The oversize is where you you grind the crank. You take the material away from the yeah, crank yeah. to and then get you those get the, you, know, the bigger, you put the bigger bearings in there. 30, 20, 30. That's clever. Now yeah. these these are machined as one piece, right? Uh, no, these are this is these are separate pieces here. I know that they come apart, but are yeah, they yeah. machined together and then cut apart, or are they machined separately? Because they don't they don't seem like they quite match up. So I'm not I was too told sure that they that. might. I mean, be. I know there's the crack rods. I don't know if you've seen those where they. They, they do one solid piece and then the, some machine around it. Okay, so it's not crack it, and then you can't you can't re recondition those unless you go two thousandths bigger on these ones. I see. But these ones you can cut because they they're flat in there. Okay, so, so I, I'm pretty sure they they probably had a, a machine that came here and just chopped it perfectly in half. The crack rods they actually crack them. And oh. You can't. They only go back on one way. 
And now we go over to visit the Yum Tub, where our baby B20 has just been freshly machined and is soaking. Sure, yeah. I'll come back and check it here in a little while. Make sure it's right on the sides. It's beautiful. Definitely good to wash. This is the the cleaner of the two blocks, right? This is the first one we brought us. Okay. This is the second one here. It's not too bad. I kind of tried to scrape it and do all I could to get off of the dirt off and stuff. So there's not too much dirt. I hope it wasn't too much work for you. No, no, no. It doesn't. And then it just went into the vats. Yeah. This one I haven't honed yet. I just bored and surfaced this one. So is the honer enough to take off the 30,000? Well, uh, no, I bored it on this first. This is I the see. one that was standard. That one was already 20. So all I did on that one was surface it and then... Start, and that's that right. Take ten. I guess I could have boarded it, but it just no, no. no point. Yeah, I remember when we were when we were working on the other engine, we had to do forty over because there was like damage on the inside of one of them, and, and we did thirty on the board, and then the honing just took out the rest. Yeah, exactly. I don't know if maybe you were if you were working a couple years ago, that might have been you. Maybe. I mean, I don't know. I've been working here since I was in high school, so oh, it's cool. been like right on six or seven years at least. Yeah, they look beautiful, and they're yeah. all cleaned up like that. Yeah, yeah. Good, though. A couple of days later, I go back to pick up all the pieces. Uh, the paint that's residual there is, is left over from the steam, but for the most part, everything's been rebuilt, new intake and exhaust valves, and valve stem seals and guides. Can look at that. And a couple of days later, going back for Bruce's engine. When you put the brake in, is there a sealer or is it just compression? It's got a sealer, but once you smack them, it squishes them in there. But we put a like an um, aviation glue on the inside of it. It's that. Is this the engine? So the other one was the, the smaller grind on the crank. This is the 30. Yes, okay. the other was a 2020. This is 30 30. This is the one that was real greasy when I brought it in? Yeah, this is the dirty one. Nice. You. Appreciate it. Pleasure. David. Take it easy. Enjoy your week, guys. Okay, this is the engine that got the 30,000s over, and it is the B20 from the 140. Um, the real ugly one. The next steps uh, really begin with grinding the rest of the paint off. There's a ton of time lapses, and the next video will be the painting of both B20 engines. I'm using stuff from VP Auto Parts, and we'll get more into detail next time. This is where I'm gonna end today's video. Thank you very much for watching. I thank you for being a loyal subscriber, or a new subscriber, if that's you. If you wanna see any videos from the work done on previous restoration for Arthur, as I reference a lot of those jobs, check out the links down in my description.